So, we said to you that love is a goal of your character development. At the end, when God is done with us, we must look like him, we must behave like him. As 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3 says that, Nor are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And anyway, it tells us that Christ is waiting with longing desire for his character to be perfectly reproduced in us. But we also said that if you're going to be molded and fashioned after his likeness, you must stay in the workshop. You must abide in him. You must remain connected with him. And we remain connected with him by faith that even when we go through the worst circumstance, like Job, we're going to hold on to him. And in the end, we will reflect his glory. Tonight, we're going to talk about one other aspect. The final aspect of our lives by which spiritual maturity is measured. And that is our understanding. And I want to explain understanding by saying, let me use the word knowledge. Our knowledge of God. Do we know him? Do we understand him? And I want you to know that the more you understand God, the more you are able to put your faith in him. And the more you put your faith in him, the more you will obey him. So you're going to realize, actually, that spiritual life begins with our understanding. Okay? Spiritual life begins with our understanding of God. If we don't understand him, we won't be able to put our faith in him. And that is why, if you notice, in evangelism, in the work of evangelism, the preacher, the gospel worker, first seeks to engage the person's understanding. We first seek to teach the word of God because we are hoping that as we teach the word of God, people will understand. As the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing, which is understanding, and hearing by the word of God. But there are many who hear the word, but as the Bible says that just like a seed that fell by the wayside, it does not take any root in their heart. They do not understand it. And so when we come to Christ, it would have meant that the word of God would have awakened our understanding. We behold his glory and we put our faith in him and begin a relationship with him. So, so understanding, my brothers and sisters, refer to our ability to see the things of God. It refers to our ability to perceive things from God's perspective. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And that is because his understanding is darkened. He doesn't know God and that's why he hates God. And that's why Jesus was able to say, Father, forgive them. For they really don't know what they do. They don't understand. And the Bible has much to say about the people who do not understand. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6, the Bible referred to those as being in darkness or having blindness of mind or hardness of heart. It says in 2 Corinthians 4 that if our gospel is hidden, the good news, the wonderful news of the gospel, if it is hidden, it is hidden from those who are lost whom the God of this world has blinded their minds so that they can see the gospel. My brother and sisters, if you can see God, you must rejoice. If you know God, you must count it to be a privilege to know him. 
if you understand God, you must see it as something very meaningful because there are people in this world who are in darkness. There are people in this world who do not know God. So it is a privilege to know him. And so we must pause to rejoice and to praise God for the opportunity to know him. Because guess what? The only way we could have known God is through the working of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 12, I think, and verse 3, the Bible says that we can't, I think, First Corinthians chapter either chapter 12 or 11, one of them. <laughs> we can't even say that Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Spirit. So it is the Holy Spirit that awakens our understanding so we can see the things of God. And Jesus appeals to this when he said, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, or he who hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Because Jesus knew that when he spoke the word of God, some will understand and some would understand. But he said, blessed are your eyes, for they see. And blessed are your ears, for they hear what the word of God has to say. Okay? Now, let me, let me um, illustrate what it means for the Christian, for the believer. Because if you notice in the story of the disciples, Jesus did not only have a problem with them with how they behave, because they were being very selfish. Jesus did not only have a problem with their lack of faith. They, they were not consistent in believing what God says. But Jesus had a problem with their slowness of heart and their lack of ability to understand. And that's why he was able to say to them at one point, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them. No. Your understanding has not developed enough for me to tell you the thing that I want to tell you. You have to grow. You have to continue to grow into maturity. And when you lack understanding, when a believer lacks understanding, they are like children who do not understand. For example, when a child, when you're a child, you used to complain about going to school. Am I correct? You used to complain about washing the dishes. You used to complain about getting up early in the morning. You used to complain about doing your duties every day. Why? Because you don't understand. <laughs> How do I know that? Because when you got understanding, you get up out of the bed yourself. Who tell you to go and, as an adult now, who tell you to go and wash the plate? Who tell you to go and get to work early? You, the reason you do that is because you now understand the value of work. You understand the value of duty. And you are now self-motivated. And the same thing happens in the spiritual life. The reason we complain about trials, the reason we complain about problems is because we don't understand what God is doing. <laughs> the reason we worry and complain about the difficulties that are in the way, it is because we don't understand. But if we saw things from God's perspective like Job, if we were able to to trust God that all things work together for good to them that love God. And as the author of Hebrews says, that God chastens those whom he loves. God would not allow you to suffer temptation unless he had something brilliant to bring out of you. And that's why the Apostle James says, if you had the right perspective, my brothers and sisters, you would count it all joy. 
when you enter into manifold temptation because the trial of your faith works patience. And it is in your own best interest that you should go through those trials. When we understand things from God's perspective, we complain that we should keep the Sabbath. <laughs> we complain that we should be obedient to the commandments. We complain that we should, we are, we are, we are too restricted, you know. We, we want to have girlfriend here and girlfriend here. We want to have relationship here and there. When, when we don't understand things from God's perspective, we more are inclined to go to the edge of the cliff than to walk circumspectly because of a lack of understanding of the things of God. And I want you to, I, I, I want to give you some perspective by showing you this slide here. I put all of them together. You see, love, brothers and sisters, is the result of holding on to God. It is, it is the fruit of the Spirit. It is the end product of God's work in our lives. Faith keeps us connected with God so that God can continue his work in us. It is understanding that gives us reason to keep holding on. It is our understanding of God that gives us reason for our faith. It is because Job understood God why Job kept holding on even in the midst of the worst situations. And I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, the opposite. And I, 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 I'm giving you this. To, it's, it's another way for you to understand what I'm trying to say. So the opposite of love is selfishness. The opposite of love is what? It is selfishness and pride and worldliness. The opposite of faith is what? What's the opposite of faith? The opposite of faith is unbelief or fear. Okay? The opposite of faith is unbelief. Very good. Thank you. The opposite of understanding is false doctrines, false teachings. And you don't realize it. You don't realize it, therefore, my brothers and sisters, that in order for Satan to shake our faith, he must first shake our understanding. And that is why the, the greatest strategy of the devil is to insert thoughts in our head. <laughs> the greatest strategy that the devil has against us is to insert thoughts that counteract the word of God. He makes suggestions that undermine the principles of God's word in our hearts. And once he can get us to undermine the word of God, then he undermine our faith and then undermine our obedience. So this is where, this is the crux of the matter. <laughs> You know, if you thought love was a crux of them, yeah, that is right, Sister Archer. That is why he attacked Eve from the mind to undermine God's word. Once he could get her to undermine God's word, he knew he destroyed faith and therefore destroyed obedience. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, not only is it important for us to grow in understanding, it's important to guard the avenues of the soul. To guard the mind concerning what we feed on. Concerning what we fill the mind with. Concerning what we believe. My brothers and sisters. Because this is where the devil messes us up. This is where the devil messes us up. You know, if, if, 
if you, I, I found this interesting parallel as I do this presentation, my brother and sister, I found this interesting par par parallel with a thing that we have been talking about from Sunday night, from, from Monday night. Look at Revelation chapter 3 and verses 14 to 21. And I want you to look at the things that, that Jesus told Laodicea that she needs. What did Jesus tell Laodicea? He says, buy of me what? What did he say must buy of him? Buy of him gold tried in fire, white raiment that you might be clothed, and I salve that you might be able to see. So this is what Jesus wants Laodicea to have. Gold of faith that is tried in fire. Even when you go through temptations and trials, you remain connected with God. He wants the right raiment represents the character of Jesus Christ and the eye self representing discernment. So you can see that this is in connection. And, and, and the Apostle Paul is telling us in two places, that when our understanding is shallow, we are going to be like a wind, like, like a reed that blows in the wind. With every wind of doctrine that blows, we are to, <laughs> to and fro. But we're not sure what we believe. Here's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4. We read it earlier. It says, he gave some apostles and, and, and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Listen to this carefully now. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sin of, sin of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is ahead, even Christ. Let me share something with you, brothers and sisters. Some of us feel that as semi Adventists, we know and believe the doctrines of the church and of the Bible. Some of us feel that because we are, we are members of a church, it means that we know and believe and we're sure of what we believe. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see the wind named COVID-19? <laughs> you see the breeze named pandemic? That breeze, you see? It shows that some of us are not firm. That wind that blew, some of us were, were we were we were blew, we were carried about. <laughs> we were carried about. I, I, I literally sat down and watched. Even some of my colleagues as pastors, I'm not ashamed to say it. Some of us were blowing with the wind. We thought we were firm. We thought we were in the church. We thought we believed the 28 fundamental beliefs. But COVID-19 show us that anything that can be shaken, it will be shaken. One of my good friends, <laughs> I tell you, I've told a story before. When I, I tell you, I've, I've listened. I've seen it, brethren. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. And God, that was a little, that, that was what Jeremiah called the footmen. Let me tell you something, COVID-19 was a little wind. But really, it is among what J Jeremiah called the footmen. And Jeremiah says, God said to Jeremiah, if you can't run with the footmen, what's going to happen? When the horsemen come. If you can't run when you have a little water, what, what's going to happen when Jordan overflow? So my brothers and sisters, our understanding needs to be strengthened. 
our understanding of the doctrines of the Bible need to be firm. That's so that when the winds blow, we are not being tossed to and fro in our minds about the truth. How do we grow in understanding? How we, what, what, what do we need to do? Here's what the Apostle Paul says. You see, there are some doctrines in the Bible that the Apostle Paul referred to as first principles. Here's what he accused the, 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 the church, the Hebrew church of. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It's on the screen. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Here's what Paul says. He says, For when, for the time, you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as need of milk <laughs> and not of strong meat. You know what the Apostle Paul is saying? The Apostle Paul is saying that there are some of us in the church for years and we're still feeding on milk. There are some of us in the church for years and we cannot handle hard food. We still have to feed on milk. Do you know what milk is? Milk, my brother and sisters, is what Paul referred to as the first principles of the oracles of God. And he listed some of the doctrines about the resurrection and about the forgiveness of sins. Paul is saying these are things that you should have been sure of already. These are things that the Seventh-day Adventist church referred to as fundamental beliefs. <laughs> fundamental beliefs. You should not be uncertain about any of these doctrines. Your mind should be settled in the truth, brothers and sisters, and then you're growing up on top of that foundation. But some of us for years, we have not laid a good foundation. Do you know why? <laughs> Let me ask you a question if you believe. Just, just a few of these doctrines that I put on the screen here. But let me, let, me, let, me show you, let me show you why some of us are not ready. Let me show you why some of us are not ready. We believe that there is a God. Am I correct? Yes, we believe that there is a God. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in salvation. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And, and, and through his name, repentance and forgiveness of sins is being preached in all the world. But sometimes... When we make mistakes, when we fall into temptation, we find it hard to believe that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We find it hard to believe and so we feel that there is something we need to do to, to, to appease God and to come back to God and to make ourselves worthy before God. But God says Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. But some of us, we claim to believe the fundamental beliefs. We, we find it hard to believe that. Let me give you another one. We believe that when you die, you're going to the grave. Whether you're wicked or you're, right, or you're righteous, you're going to the grave to fall asleep, awaiting the resurrection. You believe that, right? It's called the doctrine of the state of the dead. But some of us, when our loved one die, we go to this graveside and we throw things into the coffin. We come home and we turn on the bed. We tie a red string on the baby. And we put a hard shoe on the door. And we claim so we believe the fundamental teachings of the Bible. What you have is a cognitive dissonance between what you profess and what you actually carry out. And so my brothers and sisters, we have work to do. We have a work to do to solidify ourselves and to firm up ourselves in the doctrines of the Bible. And in order for us to do that, 
in order for us to do that, as I wrap this up, there are two things that we need to do. Number one, we need to overcome all the lies and deceptions of Satan. You know, if you think that it is impossible for you to be in the church and to be deceived, check what the Apostle Peter said. Peter said that if you're a believer and you are not growing, you are not adding to your faith, Peter says that you are blind. You are partially blind and cannot see afar off. You're not as blind as a man out in the world, but you're blind enough to be deceived. And that's a worse type of deception. Peter says, it better you never know the way of righteousness. That is a dangerous position to be in. When you think you are okay, but you are believing lies. You believe the lies of Satan. And the COVID-19 exposed some of us and the lies that we believe. We have been believing and don't even know it. The second thing that we need to do, my brother and sisters, is that we need to work on growing our understanding. And there are several things that, that I want to point to you as to how we can do that. Number one is that we need to study God's word daily. And I'm talking from experience, brother and sister. When I say study God's word daily, it is even possible when you are deceived to be reading God's word every day and not understanding it. Because pride can fill up our hearts so much that rather than going to the word of God to listen to what he says, we go there to tell the word of God what to say. And I'm talking from experience, President. I remember my own experience, even as a minister, I had to go to God and sit with him as a baby and say, God, I'm going to take my Bible again. And I'm going to read from starting from the book of Genesis. And God, this time I am going to listen. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling my personal testimony, my brother and sister. The, the book that I've written on becoming a mature Christian is my own testimony. I said, I said, God, this time I'm going to listen to what you have to say. God, I don't know anything. Please tell me what to know. Because Eve thought she knew. Eve thought she knew. But lo and behold, she was deceived. By the arch enemy. My brother and sister, the, the devil has 6,000 years and more of, 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 of craftiness. And our only safety is to go like children to the word of God and ask God, what is he saying? And I tell you from that day until now, my life has never been the same. I listen, I, even today, when I, in, tomorrow morning when I go to the Bible, I say, God, I am here. I don't know anything. Teach me and help me to understand. And as I read the word of God, I'm asking, what is it saying to me? And I say, okay, that's what it's saying. And I write it down. For you to grow in understanding, you need to read God's word like a child. That's why Jesus said, if you don't humble yourself and become like a child, you will never enter the kingdom of God. A child is someone who listens. But some of us, we have become so proud and think we know everything that not even God can teach us. The second thing is that we, as we listen, we need to obey. <laughs> we need to do what God says. Yes, just do it. <laughs> just do it. Jesus says, the man who is going to know of the doctrine is the man who do what I say, who is willing to do it. Walk in the light, he says, lest it becomes darkness to you. Walk while it is day, lest it becomes darkness. Obey what the Lord says. And that's why um, Paul said in Hebrews chapter 5 again, he says that, that, that heart, that, that 
strong meat belong to those who, by reason of exercise, have sharpened their ability to discern, to discern between wrong and right. Number three, for you to grow in understanding, you need to trust God in trials. <laughs> it is as you trust God in trials, my brothers and sisters, every trial will deepen our understanding of God and draw us closer to Him. It's just like a marriage relationship. Every conflict you overcome, your relationship with each other goes deeper. The same thing with God. Every trial, every temptation that you overcome, your understanding of God is growing. Number four, you need to testify to others about God. Some people refer to it as witnessing. It is as you tell others about God that the Holy Spirit inspires your mind and deepens your capacity to know Him and you grow in understanding. And number five, you need to listen to what other people say about God <laughs> because you won't know everything. You won't know everything from your own experience. So there are people with wisdom that you need to get. There are people who know God and the insight that they get from knowing God will help you in your journey and it will help you to understand God better. So read books and go to church and listen to sermons and you understand God more. So tonight, my brother and sisters, we have learned that not only should we grow in our behavior, not only should we grow in our faith, but we need to grow in our understanding of the things of God. Grow. Don't just, don't just say the church have written a book called 28 Fundamental Beliefs. It is on your shelf, but it doesn't mean that it is in your heart. The way to get it in your heart is by studying God's word daily, feeding on his word, obeying his word, listening to his word, and testify to others about his word. And you will grow in understanding. And the more you understand God, the more you will trust him. And the more you trust him, the more you will obey. And that's how you become a mature Christian. <laughs>